Hello everybody, I am Jedi Jack Penguin, and today I'm bringing you my LEGO Harry Potter 2019 collection video. So right in front of us, we have all eight LEGO Harry Potter sets that released in the year 2019. The only thing that is missing from this little display area is the Harry Potter Build Your Own Adventure book which I will be looking at separately anyways, I just didn't want to include it within this display since it didn't really look like it fit in with it. Since we're at the beginning, I might as well note that I do not own the Night Bus or the Golden Snitch in-store builds from this particular year, but I will be looking at all eight of these sets in great detail. So getting right into this, this is our first set, set number 75945, Expecto Patronum. This set includes 121 pieces and four minifigures of two Dementors, Sirius Black and Harry Potter. This set retails for $19.99 in the US and was a Walmart exclusive back in July 1st of 2019 and then later on became available worldwide August 1st. Taking a look at the front of the box, you still get your main characters at the very front of these boxes right there. The Harry Potter logo did change a little bit slightly. I do love the box arts for these particular sets. Definitely a very nice look to the front of the box. There's a back look at the box. You can see all the play features and also the push tab since this is a smaller type set. Taking a look at our next set, we have set number 75946, Hungarian Horntail Triwizard Challenge. This set includes 265 pieces and 4 minifigures of Cedric Diggory, Victor Crumb, Fleur Delacour, and Harry Potter. This set retailed for $29.99 in the US as a Barnes & Noble exclusive on July 1st. This set later on became available, just like all the other ones, on August 1st worldwide. Front of the box looks pretty nice, really love the background look at Hogwarts right there, that's pretty cool. You can take a look at the back of the box. This one has two push tabs, which I think is very interesting for the size of this box. And then there's a look at the interior details of the tent and all that, which I'll talk more about later on. The next set is set number 75947, Hagrid's Hut Buckbeak's Rescue. This set includes 496 pieces and minifigures of Hagrid, Waldron McNair the Executioner, the Minister of Magic Cornelius Fudge, Hermione Granger, Ron Weasley, and Harry Potter. In addition, you also get Buckbeak the Hippogriff, which I was so, so, so happy about at this particular time. This set retailed for $59.99 on July 1st as a Barnes & Noble exclusive, and then like all the other ones, became available worldwide August 1st. Front of the box looks very nice, really love the background featuring the grounds of Hogwarts right there. You can flip it right around to take a look at the back of the box right there showing some of the interior details to this dollhouse style Hagrid's hut right there. The next set is set number 75948, Hogwarts Clock Tower. This set includes 922 pieces and minifigures of Madame Maxime, Albus Dumbledore, Victor Crumb, Cedric Diggory, Fleur Delacour, Ron Weasley, Harry Potter, and Hermione Granger. This set retailed for $89.99 on July 1st as a Barnes & Noble exclusive and then became available worldwide on August 1st. Front of the box looks very nice, very cool Christmassy look to the Yule Ball situation that they have going on over here. This is supposed to be based off technically years 3 slash 4, though the minifigures are based off the Goblet of Fire. Flipping the box around, there's a look at some of the interior details going on, which I'll talk more about when we look at the set. The next set is set number 75957, The Night Bus. This set includes 403 pieces and minifigures of Stan Shunpike, Ernie Prang, and Harry Potter. This set retailed for $39.99 in the US on July 1st as a Barnes & Noble exclusive and then became available worldwide on August 1st. Really cool to see this sort of blurred out city background right here with the night bus going by real fast. That's really cool to see as the front of the box. Back of the box features the interior details, which I think is very interesting for this particular set that I'll talk more about, like I keep saying, later on in this video. The next set is set number 75958, Bobaton's Carriage Arrival at Hogwarts. This set includes 430 pieces and minifigures of Hagrid, Madame Maxime, Fleur Delacour, and Gabrielle Delacour. This set retailed for $49.99 and was available worldwide on August 1st. Front of the box looks pretty nice. This set was totally unexpected, at least in my opinion. Very cool to see this made for the very first time in LEGO form. There's a look at the back showing the interior. Very cool set right here. 
The next set is set number 75964, LEGO Harry Potter 2019 Advent Calendar. This set includes 305 pieces and minifigures of Albus Dumbledore, Harry Potter, Hermione Granger, the Hogwarts Architect, Professor Flitwick, Professor McGonagall, and Ron Weasley. Here's a look at the front of the box. I will show off another look at the box in a little bit. You can take a look at the very front of it. it. just shows what you get going on, some of the stuff that you get within this advent calendar. You can take a look at the back, another look at what I'll be showing in a little bit. And then you can, of course, open it up. You take a look at all of the days going on over there. It is a little bit flimsy going on since this part does like to stick up when it hasn't been folded like this for a while. So taking a quick look at that, that's just very nice place for you to put all of your stuff that you get throughout all of the days which are scattered all throughout the front of the box. Also note that this set retailed for $39.99 and was available come September 1st worldwide. And then the final retail set is set number 75965, The Rise of Voldemort. This set includes 184 pieces and minifigures of a unnamed Death Eater, Lord Voldemort, Peter Pettigrew, and Harry Potter. You also get Baby Voldemort within this particular set. This set retailed for $19.99 and was available worldwide come August 1st. Taking a look at the very front to get a very interesting graveyard background. Very dark scene for LEGO to be portraying within a LEGO set and I think they did a wonderful job, though I would have liked to seen a bigger playset for this particular scene. Here's a look at the back and take a look at some of the play features and stuff. Very cool interesting set. And then finally we have the Harry Potter Build Your Own Adventure book. This set includes 101 pieces and a minifigure of Harry Potter that we previously got within 2018. This book came out July 1st and retailed for $24.99 in the US. Okay, so here are all of the minifigures that are included within the 2019 wave of LEGO Harry Potter sets. Just like my 2018 collection video, I'm going to be taking a closer look at these after looking at these in a big group. So shown right in front of us, we have a total of 41 minifigures that we get over the course of 2019. 34 of these characters are unique to the sets that they come in and are exclusive. Seven of these minifigures are duplicates. In addition, all the way in the back we have our two new animal characters, that being Buckbeak the Hippogriff and Harry's Stag Patronus. Compared to in 2018, we don't have as many minifigures here since we didn't have a collectible minifigure series, but within 2020 I expect we will be getting a lot, a lot, a lot of minifigures since we do have the minifigure series, the direct-to-consumer, and all of those sets, in addition to some minifigures that will be exclusive to some books. But overall, this is a pretty nice selection, mainly characters from Years 3 slash 4, Prisoner of Azkaban, Goblet of Fire. We also get a little bit of characters from the first Harry Potter movie, The Philosopher's Stone, mainly from the Avon Calendar, and then the Build Your Own Adventure book. Okay, we might as well start by taking a look at the duplicates that come within the 2019 sets. Taking a look all the way down here, we have the Year One Hogwarts Uniform Harry Potter minifigure. This character comes within the Harry Potter Build Your Own Adventure book. He also comes within a couple of the other sets from 2018. Next, we have Harry Potter within his Year 3 casual outfit. We get two duplicates of this minifigure. This character comes within the Expecto Patronum set, the Hagrid's Hunt Buckbeak's Rescue set, as well as the Night Bus. Next, we have Professor Albus Dumbledore right here who comes within the 2019 LEGO Harry Potter Advent Calendar. This version of him also comes within the Hogwarts Great Hall from 2018. 2018. Next, we have Rubius Hagrid, who comes within the Hagrid's Hunt Buckbeak's Rescue. This minifigure also comes within the Hogwarts Great Hall set from 2018. And then finally, we have these two Dementors, which aren't really considered duplicates since it's pretty much army building right here. These two come within the Expecto Patronum set, and you get one additional version of the Dementor within the Hogwarts Express set from 2018. So yeah, that's pretty much all for the duplicate characters. Taking a look at our minifigure of Harry Potter, we get a total of five different variants of your Harry Potter minifigure within the 2019 LEGO Harry Potter sets. We get one from year one from the Harry Potter 2019 advent calendar, 
we get Harry Potter in his casual year three outfit right there. We get two duplicates of that minifigure. And then the rest of them are from the Goblet of Fire right there from the first task, the Yule Ball, and then the final task of the Triwizard Tournament. We do get a new facial expression for your Harry Potter minifigure within these 2019 sets. You guys can check those out right there. We get the unhappy face and then the happy face on the front. We get some very nice printing for the front of these minifigures torsos as well. I really love the Firebolt accessory with your first task Harry Potter minifigure. I think that's really well done. I also love how they use the Lloyd from the Lego Ninjago movie hairpiece right there for the year four version of Harry Potter minifigures, showing all of the minifigures when they didn't get a haircut, which I really love how they just made it a little bit longer than they previously did. Of course, keeping with the mid-sized legs for these characters as they are growing up, I believe we are gonna get a transition to the normal size legs within the 2020 sets, since those are based off year five slash six. We get the same color wand in dark brown for all of these minifigures right there. You can take a look at the backs of these characters. You can see that we get some very nice printing throughout all of these characters, which is also pretty nice to see. We get the small size legs since that minifigure is from year one. And then we also keep the same hairpiece from 2018 for the year three version of Harry Potter, which is also very interesting to note. So yeah, that's pretty much all for our minifigure of Harry Potter. Next, taking a look at Ron Weasley, we get one from year one within the Harry Potter advent calendar, and then we get one from year three, and then finally we get one from year four within his Yule Ball outfit. For our year three and four versions of Ron Weasley, we do get the mid-sized legs right there, as well as the same head facial expression right there. You can see the front facial expression and then the back facial expression, which I put with the Yule Ball because I felt like it really fit right there. We also get a different hairpiece for the one from the Yule Ball set, which is also very interesting that that is the same hairpiece that they also used for Wormtail within the Rise of Voldemort set. I think that's very interesting. I think that they could have probably done a different hairpiece, though I think that actually fits his character more than it does Wormtail's character. We get the same hairpiece for the year three version that we get for the year one slash two version of Ron Weasley. They all have the same accessory of the brown wand piece. We get some very nice torso printing right there, small legs for the year one version of Ron. And then of course we do get some very nice back printing on all of these minifigures. And if I didn't mention it before, both the year one versions of Harry, Ron, and Hermione from the advent calendar all have double-sided facial expressions. It's the same face used within the 2018 sets. Next, we have Hermione Granger right here. Just like all the other characters, we have a advent calendar variant from year one, and then we have a year three version, and then a year four version from the Yule Ball. Right here, you can see that they've been making new hair pieces for Hermione all throughout this entire season. We have the 2018 new hair piece, and then we have the new hair pieces for 2019 right there. We get a new hair piece for the year three Hermione, which I think that they should have went with the one that they put on the year three slash four collectible minifigures version of Hermione. I think that that was a waste of a new piece, but I think that the new piece that they made for her Yule Ball variant, I think is very well done. You do get a hole on the very top if you want to put like a crown or something like that on the very top. The one thing that I find the most interesting about the Yule Ball variant of Hermione Granger is that we get a one by two brick piece and a one by two plate piece for the legs of the character. I do like that we do get a print. I did have to get a replacement of that because it broke within the actual set that I bought. But I think that it looks fine. I just, it's it's a weird, it's a, something different that Lego hasn't really done before. I love the printing on the fronts of all of these torsos, including the time turner on the very front of the year three Hermione. You can take a look at the back printing a little bit. If you want to see more in depth, you guys can check out my actual review. And that is supposed to mimic the mid-sized legs style right there with the skirt piece and then also the legs right there. We get the same accessory for your Hermione minifigures and then of course the same facial expression between these two characters, which is a reuse from another minifigure, which is a little disappointing, but I'm fine with it. It definitely works for Hermione's minifigure and you guys can check that out right there, the two different facial expressions for the character. Next, moving on to Cedric Diggory, we get two variants of his minifigure, one from the first task and then one from the Yule Ball right there. Very interesting to see two variants of his character. We also got him within the 2018 collectible minifigures within his 
fourth task outfit which works very well with the rise of Voldemort set which actually get Harry within his fourth task outfit I wonder if we're ever gonna get the fourth task outfits for the remaining champions we still don't have any outfits for these characters for the second task which was the lake that's something that I hope Lego eventually decides to at least make maybe they're saving it for something who knows since I'll talk more about that in a little bit we get some very nice leg printing right here for the first task version of Cedric Diggory, which is the same leg printing that they've been using for a while. We get the same brown wand for the accessory. Really love the torso printing right there. Sort of similar to Harry's torso printing right there for Cedric Diggory, which is very interesting. Taking a look at the back right here, really love the printing there with Diggory on the very back of this minifigure. And then you can check out the facial expression for Cedric right there. There's the back facial expression and the first facial expression right there. Same facial expression being used. We also get this hair piece right there inside lighter brown compared to the darker brown that they used on the collectible minifigure previously. And also note that this facial expression is a reuse of another minifigure's facial expression for this particular character. Next we have Victor Crumb right here. We get some plain black legs for his minifigure. Some very nice torso printing which I think that the torso printing is probably the best part of this minifigure. You can take a look at the front and the back of that. Facial expression, I think that they probably could have done better. Probably make a new facial expression for his minifigure. That's really all that I was asking for. This facial expression does not fit his minifigure, and they also use this facial expression for a previous minifigure, so it is a reuse, which is very disappointing. The hair piece, I think it's fine for Crumb, but I think that they probably could have made something new for that too. But, you know, it's okay for what it is. I just think that the facial expression is the only thing that's wrong with this particular minifigure. We also do get this more brownish-orange wand piece right there, which I think is also pretty nice to get for his character. I don't think we've gotten it within that color previously, so it's pretty nice to see that he came with that color. So, yeah, that's pretty much all for our minifigure of Victor Crumb. Next we have Fleur Delacour right here, which we actually get a new version of her minifigure right here, which I think is very nice. This one has to be the best version of her character. This is when she arrives at Hogwarts within her Beau Baton outfit. I really love the dual molding for her legs using the dark blue and that lighter blue right there. That's a really cool color and also the torso printing is very nice. I do love the new hair hat combo piece that's very very well done and definitely represents her character a lot better. Though I think that she could have been a little bit more blonde than this yellow color that they used for her hair piece. You can see that we get some very nice back printing across all of these minifigures right there, but she does have a different facial expression compared to all the other characters. If you do take a look under there, we get this surprised facial expression, which I think is very well done. This is a little bit of a soft plastic right there for the hair piece, which is also a very nice bonus. Reuse of that common ponytail piece right there inside that yellow color. Very, very odd color, but then of course you do get a double-sided facial expression for your minifigure of Flair, which I should have changed before I put this up here, but we have two different facial expressions for this particular version of Fleur. This facial expression is a reuse of another person's facial expression, which is yet again disappointing for all of our Triwizard Tournament players, that they all have minifigure facial expression reuses and not new prints. We do get the printing for the front of these characters' torso, and then the only difference with the Yule Ball version is, of course, that we do get this more dress piece going on right here for her character. We also do get this dark tan wand for all of the minifigures, so yeah, that's pretty much all for Fleur Delacour. Our next minifigure is Gabrielle Delacour. This is Fleur's sister. Really cool to see her come within a Lego set, and also somewhat of a teaser, I guess. You can see that she comes with the one accessory being this 1x2 printed letter piece. Also seen within the Harry Potter 2019 advent calendar, she also gets the same color wand as her older sister. We get some short legs for her character since she is a very young character. Would have liked to see the dual molding there as well, but I think it's fine for what it is. Get the same torso print as Fleur's minifigure front and back, and also same hair hat combo which I think works pretty fine can also take a look at her two facial expressions right here. This is probably the facial expression that is the most questionable as to if we are going to be getting a second task Lego set since she is one of the hostages. 
which I think is very cool to see that they gave her this sleeping face. Hopefully we do see something in the future that would be really, really cool if we do see something like that within the future of the Lego Harry Potter theme. Taking a look at some of our teachers right here, we have Professor Albus Dumbledore. This is his year four version in his Yule Ball outfit who comes within the Hogwarts Clock Tower set. And then our two other minifigures, we have Professor McGonagall, which is actually new compared to the one that we got in 2018, and Professor Flitwick right here from the Harry Potter 2019 Advent Calendar. Right here, we get a very nice dress piece for your minifigure of Dumbledore, some very nice printing on there, and also the torso piece. We also get the same beard piece and hair hat combo as the collectible minifigures version. We just get a different color for the hat, which is also very interesting to note. We get the same facial expression as well. That came on the 2018 Dumbledore minifigure within the Hogwarts Great Hall set. You get some very nice back printing as well right there. You can also just wiggle off that hair piece so then you can get a better look at that other facial expression. Like I said, just the same facial expression as the 2018 minifigure. We get some back printing on your Professor McGonagall minifigure, same torso and legs and hat as the 2018 version. We just get a new head which only has the one-sided facial expression which is a very nice bonus. Because if you remember, I did mention that there was a problem with the 2018 version where it had a double-sided facial expression and that you could see the mouth a little bit underneath the hat, which was very nice that they fixed that problem. Professor Flitwick is a very nice addition. We did previously get him within the collectible minifigures line. We do get a new facial expression for his minifigure, same hair piece. Really love the bow tie piece and also some very nice printing on the front and back of his torso. So yeah, that's pretty much all for your minifigures that are teachers. Oops, I almost forgot. We have one more teacher right here. Well, actually, we also have another professor from another school. We have Rubius Hagrid right here. This is actually probably one of the cooler things that we saw within 2019. This shows that LEGO is going to be making us variants of Hagrid's minifigure. This is Hagrid inside his Yule Ball outfit. I think that that's really cool that they actually gave him this new print for his character. We get the Hagrid body inside a new color, inside that brown color. Also the Hagrid arms in brown. We get the light flesh hands. We get the same short legs right there for his character. I really love the printing right there. We also do get the same facial expression as all of the other Hagrid minifigures. Same thing goes for the beard piece, same beard piece. And then we get two of these little paddle accessories right here just since he is within the Beau Baton's carriage arrival set. He's there to wave down the carriage. So yeah, that's pretty much all for our minifigure of Rubius Hagrid. Our next minifigure is Madame Maxime right here. This is a really cool character to get. We got her for the very first time in Lego form. Sadly, we didn't see Professor Kakarov within any of these sets. Hopefully we do get the Durmstrang ship, a remake of that sometime in the near future. We do get this very nice skirt piece right here, which is represented by a slope piece compared to the normal types of skirt pieces that LEGO has just recently introduced. We do get some very lovely prints on both the front and the back of those, as well as the torsos and how those interconnect I think is very well done, especially on like, it's just really well done. That's really all that I gotta say there. We do get a double-sided facial expression for her character right there. You can see that we have the front facial expression, she's happy, and then the other side, she's a little sad. We get the same color wand as your crumb minifigure inside that inside that orangish brown color. Pretty nice to get that. But the one thing that is very inconsistent between these two characters, which I think is like the weirdest thing, is that the hair pieces are different colors right here. You get a black hair piece right here for the one that comes within the Bobaton's carriage arrival set, and then the other one from the Yule Ball has this darker brown colored hair piece. Don't really know which one is supposed to be suitable, but I'd rather pick the dark brown one. I think that one fits her character a little bit better than the plain black one. So yeah, that's pretty much all for our minifigure of Madame Maxime. Growing our collection of the Marauders right here, we get Sirius Black and Peter Pettigrew or Padfoot and Wormtail. Really love the leg printing on both these characters and also the torso printing is well done. We also do get a light gray hand on Wormtail right there to represent that he cut off his hand within this particular scene, which I think is very funny. He's the only minifigure to actually have a wand compared to Sirius who is defenseless. He could have stolen a wand, but I guess he didn't have his wand from that particular scene since this is based off his year three appearance and this is based off his year four appearance. 
We do get some double-sided facial expressions for their characters if you do take off their hair pieces and turn them around. There's a look at the other facial expressions that you get for their minifigures and their back printing very nicely done. Sirius's hairpiece I think is a very nice fit to his character. I do hope that we get a year 5 variant of his minifigure sometime in the future. That's really all that I'm asking for there. The hairpiece for Wormtail, I think that they could have picked something a little bit better for his character. I don't really feel like that hairpiece fits him. And then in addition, Wormtail does get this knife right there to cut open Harry's arm, so that's... That's, I guess, nice. So, yeah, that's pretty much all for our minifigures of these two Marauders, and they join Remus Lupin or Mooney from 2018. Moving on to some other characters right here, we have Cornelius Fudge, the Minister of Magic, and then we have Stan Shunpike and Ernie Prang right there. This is the second time that we ever got Ernie Prang in LEGO form. Very nice to see him return, and this is probably the most accurate version of him. Same thing goes for Stan Shumpike. We got him for the third time within this particular set. Really love the torso printing on all these characters. We also get that same leg printing reuse on Cornelius Fudge right there. Very nice torso printing on the front and then the back of these characters. Really love the hair piece that they use for Ernie Prang right there. Very well done. The hat piece is a very nice reuse of the police hat just in a new color. I think that's very well done. We get the bowler hat for Fudge and he only has the one facial expression since I guess they made him a bald character which is very weird but that is a reuse of another headpiece that comes within a couple of other Lego sets. We do get new facial expressions for Stan and Ernie right there. Really love that facial expression for Stan Shunpike and then if you do turn around the hairpiece for Ernie Prang. We do not get another facial expression, which is a little disappointing, but they were probably doing that because it would be a little hard to hide underneath that bald spot right there. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I got to say for these minifigures. And finally, might as well end with all the bad guys right here. We have Lord Voldemort himself, as well as this unnamed Death Eater, and then Walden McNair, the Executioner. Very interesting since also Walden McNair is a Death Eater, so I guess you can put him within the Rise of Voldemort set as well. We get some skirt pieces, the same skirt pieces for the unnamed Death Eater and Voldemort. Some very nice torso printing. Would have liked to see some dual molded arms on Walden McNair having some having the black go down right to this side and then having the light flesh right there that probably worked would have worked a little bit better for his character we do get some back printing on these characters like i mentioned before no back printing on the skirt pieces or printing at all on those skirt pieces we only get the one facial expression for voldemort right there one facial expression for all of these characters which is i'm i'm fine with it it's okay for what it is and then we get the old hood piece for your walden mcnair minifigure which would hopefully later on be replaced with the new hood piece that they introduced to Star Wars. We also do get this very interesting piece right here for the top of the Death Eaters hood. I think that's very cool to see that they made that in black. And then we of course get this axe right here as Walden McNair's accessories. So yeah, that's pretty much all for the minifigures included in 2019 sets. Okay, so here are all of the LEGO Harry Potter products that released in the year 2019. We have all of the minifigures and all of the sets displayed out right here. Like I mentioned before, we get a total of 8 regular retail sets and 1 book, which includes some various pieces to build a model. In addition, we get 2 mini in-store builds, one of the Night Bus and of a Golden Snitch. I do not own the Golden Snitch, but I was actually able to rebuild the Night Bus with my own pieces, and I will be showing that off since I do have an upcoming Night Bus collection video coming in the future. So just like my 2018 collection video, I will do a quick little montage in the middle showcasing all of these products in their glory in this particular state. This is a table featuring all of the 2019 LEGO Harry Potter products. It's a little bit sadder than the 2018 sets since there was quite a lot more there, but I expect 2020 will have a lot, a lot of new Harry Potter products and you guys can expect my 2020 Harry Potter collection video next year in 2021. So yeah, let's continue with a quick little montage featuring all of the stuff that you see in front of me.
Taking a look at our first set, we have set number 75945, Expecto Patronum. This set includes four minifigures of Harry Potter, Sirius Black, and two Dementors, as well as Harry's stag Patronus, which I'm really happy that they actually made this because it brings more opportunity to the LEGO Harry Potter line with having these sort of molded Patronus characters. I know that we're going to be getting two more in 2020 for both Luna and Hermione Granger within a $20 cheap set, so that should be very exciting to go along with Harry's stag within this set. But removing our minifigures, we're going to take a quick look at Harry's stag and then the two tree builds. So for Harry's stag Patronus, I really love this new mold that they made for the stag. I really love that. And also seeing like this glittery sort of translucent blue color I think is really cool. The antlers use a sort of soft plastic for those so then they don't break too easily. That's very nice. We also get some other glittery pieces right here. We get one of these 1x2 bricks and that's a topped by a regular trans blue 1x2 plate piece right on top of it. Not a glittery one which is a little disappointing but you know it's fine. And then of course there isn't really too much articulation to the character. It's just sort of for decoration and I really love that they included him just as a sort of extra little nod to the Expecto Patronum charm within this particular set. Moving on to the two tree builds, we get this smaller build right here which also features a play feature for the Expecto Patronum charm as well. You get this stud gun on the very side, you just gotta launch that out and that launches this trans blue dish piece right here with more glitter in it. Very nice that they go with that as the I guess uncorporeal version of the spell which I think is very interesting. The tree builds are actually very cool. I really like how they made these trees. They're just they're very interesting just to say the least right there. I like that we get some olive green leaf pieces on these and just like it's a weird sort of tree build just seeing like it's sort of like a display tree build because if you look at the back we get all of the other parts being shown right here just to show how this is being made up. We have a sort of similar build being used for the other tree which is also connected to this little rocky area right here. This is where you want to lay your minifigure of Sirius Black so you can have your minifigure of Sirius Black just lying down right here in this general area. Very, Just a very good scene recognition right here. I really like that LEGO picked this scene out of all of the other scenes since we haven't actually seen this in LEGO form before. Of course you have your Dementor characters coming to try and give Sirius Black a kiss and then we have Harry with his wand and his stag Patronus to chase off the Dementors which I really like that they give this as a very nice playset. In addition, you can see that we have the water down here since that is done by the lake. And then we have the back of the tree build and also the back of this little rocky area. Just a very nice small playset with some very nice minifigures. Really love getting Sirius Black for the first time for me. He did come previously within 2004. And then it's a nice way to army build some Dementors. And then you get Harry Stag Patronus, which I think is a very cool inclusion within this particular set. For our next set, we have set number 75946, Hungarian Horntail Triwizard Challenge. This set includes four minifigures of Harry Potter, Cedric Diggory, Victor Crumb, and Fleur Delacour. All of the minifigures within the set are exclusive, which I really like that they gave the four champions different outfits within most of these 2019 LEGO Harry Potter sets. Removing our minifigures and taking a look at our main attraction right here for the first task of the Triwizard Tournament, we have the Hungarian Horntail, which this is the dragon that Harry faces within the Goblet of Fire for the first task. I really like how they include this little rocky area just as a small little build, which also has a golden egg piece that's a reuse of the egg piece from the Angry Birds theme, but in this pearl gold color, which I really think that's cool to see it within that color which that, of course, is the egg that Harry collects using his Firebolt as his accessory, which is a really cool accessory in addition. Get some little flames right here since we have our main dragon character who is also bursting flames out of his mouth. We use the same sort of head mold going on right here as the Akami from Fantastic Beasts in 2018, which I think is very interesting. I would have liked to see maybe a new head for this character. You know, the build for it, I think, is a little too... A little too blocky. I definitely like the molded version from 2005. 
5 when they did release sets for the Goblet of Fire, but I think that it's an okay representation of the character. The wings, I think, are really well done. I really love the dual molding used there. Of course, you can disconnect your dragon right here. It's just connected by a chain that you can put on its neck right there. You just place it on in that little area very nice and easily. Taking a closer look at the dragon's head right here, you can see that we have some ball joints right at the very top of it. We have some ball joints for the little neck area. You can't close the mouth. That's the one thing that I'm a little annoyed about since it does have this sort of play feature going on where it has to have the fire coming out. You can take that out, but you still can't close the mouth unless you take that little stick piece going on right there, that fire hose piece in like gray out of the mouth of the character. We get some other joints right here for the legs, which I think is very interesting. Those are pretty well done. I like how they are a little bit difficult to move. You can also move those side to side, which I think is very interesting. You can also move the little talons right here. Those are connected by some clip pieces on both sides of the dragon. We get some more ball joints towards the back of it for the tail, which I think is very nice. And also I really love the, ba the back spike right there. We get a sticker on the very back of the dragon as well if you're interested in that. The wings can of course move, those are connected via those different types of hinge clip pieces back here. And like I said, just the overall look at these wings, those dual molding with the trans clear and also this dark brown looks very nice for the dragon and it's very cool that those are some exclusive pieces within this particular set. So yeah, overall it's an okay build. It's, it's good for what it is, it's definitely representing a dragon character, though I think that LEGO probably could have done a better job with it. Looking at the tent build, I think that this is really cool. This is the first time that we actually got the Triwizard Tournament first task tent within a set. I think that they did I think that they did a wonderful job with making it able to be opened. So then you can see inside we have some stickers representing both Hogwarts as well as Bobaton and Durmstrang, which I think is really cool seeing those crests on the wall right there. And that's really cool that they made those stickers. We get a little bed right here if you want to lay down a character like you have Cedric Diggory. He's getting ready for the task and he's a little tired so he's going to take a little nap in there. That's pretty cool. We have a little bedroom dresser over here as well as another little place for you to sit if you want to remove those little goblets. That's very interesting. You have some potion going on right there on top of the dresser. And then of course that's just like the main part of this. You can open this and close it and I think that's really cool that LEGO gave you that option as an extra little play feature. Taking a look at the outer details, you just get a little bit of rocky areas going on. You know, nothing really too special. The color scheme is fine. I like that they kept it with this tan color that works very well for what it is. And yeah, that's pretty much all that I gotta say for this particular set. For the next set, we have set number 75947, Hagrid's Hut, Buckbeak's Rescue. This set includes minifigures of Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, Hermione Granger, Hagrid, Cornelius Fudge, the Minister of Magic, and Walden McNair, the Executioner. In addition, just like the Expecto Patronum set, we get a new molded animal character, that being Buckbeak, which this is the second time that we've ever got him in LEGO form. We got him previously within the 2004 LEGO Harry Potter Prisoner of Azkaban wave. I don't have that version of Buckbeak. I really hope to get some more sets from that particular era sometime in the near future. Removing our minifigures and taking a look at our first small build, we have Buckbeak right here in the pumpkin patch. I really love that they represent the pumpkin patch within this particular set. I think this is the first time that we actually got that represented in Lego form in addition to Hagrid's Hut, which there is some more to talk about that in a little bit. Right here we have Buckbeak. He's all tied up. I really hate the way that he's tied up. I, I gotta set him free, so in order to set him free, you just gotta remove this little bit of the chain right here, and then you can take it off of him. There isn't an easy way to have this still connected to put it over his head, which is a little annoying, but I'm fine with having to take that little piece off. It's just a little bit more extra work. And then of course you can close that back up right there. That's connected by a clip piece, which goes on to this giant chain, which is on this pole piece, which is the same pole piece that they use to make the staircases at some of the Harry Potter within some of the Harry Potter Hogwarts sets. In addition, we get this new pumpkin piece right here, which I think is really cool that they made this new pumpkin piece. You can also find that as a lantern within some of the Chinese New Year sets. We have some very nice greenery going on right there. It's a very interesting small little build that they decided to include in addition. For Buckbeak the Hippogriff, we get a lot of very nice articulation. I love that they decided to make him able to bow his head. That's a really wonderful play feature. I really love that they did that. 
And then of course you get the wings right here. Those are connected via clip pieces. Those are actually new pieces as well for this character, which is really cool. We get a very nice studded area right here if you want to have your minifigure of Harry Potter or Hermione ride Buckbeak. That's really cool as another really nice play feature. And in addition, we do get the clock tower within this particular wave, so that does fit very well with this particular scene. And of course, you get Sirius Black. For the build of Hagrid's Hut right here, this is the first time that we ever got Hagrid's Hut featuring both sides of it. We get the front main piece of the cabin and then we also get the other side attachment. This is the first time that LEGO did it. Usually it's all just one big round area. So I'm really happy that LEGO actually paid attention to the source material with this. The color scheme I think it's okay. It's fine for what it is using a lot of light gray, dark gray, and a little bit of that dark tan color right there and a little bit of brown as well. We also use some sand green up here at the very top of the roof, so that's very interesting. More of that olive green greenery going on right there and some other weeds just growing off the side. We get some stickers for the very front doors of Hagrid's Hut right there. I like that they don't go all out with the stickers on the very front of it and that they keep it just very blocky. I like the textures that they decided to use for the very front of the house. We get a lot of different types of windows right there. I like how they represent each of the different windows and how they should look and everything. We get another sticker down here on this very side area. We get some Technic functions just for how this is all connected. You can take a look over here on this side. We get another big sticker on one of these wall elements. For the very top of Hagrid's Hut, I really like how they did the roofs using a lot of different types of clip pieces right here. We also get another little hinge piece going on over here for the very top with the chimney. We get the very tops right here with some very pointed top areas. Very cool, really like how this is done. And then we can move on to the interior of Hagrid's Hut. And then finally taking a look at the interior, there is a lot to look at over here. Some printed pieces and some more stickers going on. So taking a look at the first part of the interior, this is like the front bit of Hagrid's Hut. You get his armchair all the way in the back. You get a little bag. You also get the little coffee table going on right here with some chairs. You get two chairs, one for Harry and one for Ron. There isn't one for Hermione though, I guess you can sit one of those characters within the actual armchair since I don't think Hagrid really sits in that since he does have the small legs for his character. Also in the very background right here you can see that we get his pink umbrella as well as a shovel right there inside one of those little accessory areas. All of these are pretty easy to come off since they're on these 2x2 circular jumper plates in dark gray and that's very nice. So then you can take these out at your leisure, we get the little teacup right here. We have some other accessories lining the very top of Hagrid's Hut. We get a lot of really cool references, even a little egg right there within the fireplace, which I guess is supposed to represent Norbert, which is very cool. I really like that they include that. We get another sticker right here on one of these tile pieces for a wood plank. We get a little broom over here. And then another really cool feature that you can do is that you can lift up this little part of the roof right here and then there's this little ball that you can press down and that will light up the fire right there with a light brick. That's really cool and I think that that's probably one of the more interesting play features that they include in here just giving it a little bit more of an orange lighting right there with the fire and then of course you can push that down right there if you just want to hide it and then we can put this seat right back. For the other side of Hagrid's Hut we get this little treasure chest right here. You can open that up there is a little chocolate frog in there. I think that's very nice. You can just put that right back over here. That's just connected by a stud in the middle, which I think is very interesting. We get a little spider up here. No other accessories up on the very top. And then we get a little desk for Hagrid right here, or at least another little desk within the room with a little chair. And then one of those printed two by two tile pieces for the boy who lived daily profit. So yeah, that's pretty much all for the interior of Hagrid's hut. Taking a look at the next set, we have set number 75948, Hogwarts Clock Tower. This set includes eight minifigures of Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, Hermione Granger, Victor Crumb, Cedric Diggory, Fleur Delacour, Madame Maxime, and Albus Dumbledore. They are all within their Yule Ball outfits, which is also very interesting. I like that they decided to go with a scene that they never depicted before within LEGO form, which is very cool. And again, we do get some variants of the four champions. Moving our minifigures out of the way, let's take a look at those smaller builds. We get three smaller builds in addition to the big build for our castle. We get this very nice Christmas tree right here. Very simple build going on for the Christmas tree. You get a very nice star at the very top, and it's covered in snow since it is Christmas time. 
There's just a quick look at that. There's a look at the bottom right there on one of those circular plate pieces. A lot of triangular plate pieces being used for the side of it and some translucent studs just for some lights. That's very nice. And then in addition, we get these two table builds, pretty much the same exact build, just with different stuff on the very top of it. This table right here features a very nice two of these goblets right here in Transclear, as well as this little pyramid thing going on in the very middle. And then we get this other very nice pyramid-like type thing going on on this one right here. You can take a look at that. That's very cool. I really like these topped pieces right here. Those are pretty nice to get. Moving on to the build for the overall castle. This build is actually quite large. It's pretty hard to fit within my camera. You get a very nice big tower right here for the clock tower and then you have a little side area which we'll take a look at the interior after we take a look at the outer details. Get a lot of very nice architecture for this particular set. This set also connects with the Hogwarts Great Hall and the Hogwarts Whomping Willow sets from 2018 and it will also be able to connect with the Hogwarts Astronomy Tower coming in late 2020. Right away we have some very nice printed pieces on this set right here for the main clock area which I think is really amazing that they made these printed pieces. We get this printed shield piece just as the extra little clock area coming out and then we get another printed dish piece right here with all those Roman numeral numbers on it. I really like that. And then of course we use these two wrench or socket pieces right there, those tool pieces for the hands on the clock, which I think is a really creative use of those pieces by Lego. Continuing our look at the castle right here, I'm going to just zoom out. We get some very nice looks right here from the side. I really love how they built this right here using those clip pieces just to connect these areas for those angles. I really like that. We also use some more different types of slope pieces right here those more roof tile type ones. We get a lot of windows over here. I even like how they represent just like the graded window area right there, which is pretty cool to see within this particular set. Though of course the interior doesn't really represent what it should be. I think it's fine for what it is. And then we can move over to this side. You can see some more windows on the very side there. And then we have some stickers going on over here on this particular area and over here and also down there. And I don't know if there's any stickers on this other side over here. Well, actually, yes, we do get one sticker all the way down here. And we, of course, have the connection points to the other Hogwarts castles. So let's take a look at the interior. Taking a look at the interior details, there's quite a lot to talk about. First, we're going to start all the way down here. We have the main entryway hall area. We get a little treasure chest right here. There's nothing in there, which is a little disappointing. You know, you could pretend to put Mad-Eye Moody in there since his office is technically, his classroom is technically up above it. We have what is supposed to represent the Goblet of Fire, which is a very weak representation, at least in my opinion, just using that goblet piece and then that blue flame coming out of it. I wish they actually made something exclusive for that. That would be pretty nice. Moving upwards, we have the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom, which of course, if you have your Mad-Eye Moody minifigure from the 2018 Collectible Minifigure series, he definitely will fit very well with this particular scene. We have a very nice sticker for his classroom right there. This is where they're going over the Unforgivable Curses. Right here on the table, we are supposed to have this book piece right there, which fell off when I moved the set which i'm gonna try and get us right here this has the same exact print as all the other ones from 2018 with the wingardium leviosa spell which is a little disappointing you know you only get the one desk and then you have the little glass area with the spider which isn't even in there and you get some other little stuff going on in the very background of that and then moving to the very top we have the hospital wing which hopefully we do eventually get a madame pomfrey minifigure it's something that we really need i like how they represent the sheets between the beds that's very nice we also have the feature of turning back the time for this clock which i think is really cool represented with these gears all you got to do is turn that and that will play around with the time on the clock. We also have some beds right here which also have these studs on the very end so then you can sit your minifigures down on them. That's very nice. You can put Ron up there. That's also a really cool scene that you can do with some of your minifigures. Moving back down over here we have the Prefects bathroom which I really love that we got this and considering that we're going to be getting a Moaning Myrtle minifigure within the Series 2 collectible minifigures it's very exciting to see this represented right here. I really love the sticker for the stained glass window with the mermaid right there. That's really cool that they include that. 
you can put Harry or Cedric within there. And also the one thing that I do have to complain about is the size of it. It should be bigger. Same thing goes with what's above it, which is Dumbledore's office, which I think is a very weak representation of his office that should be bigger. Like I keep saying, it's just something that should be a lot larger than what it is. We get a lot of stickers right here on these side areas and also those panel areas and then those curved wall elements on the very back with a lot of different references though I do like that they reference a lot of stuff though I would have liked to see some more details more than just like the stickers with all these books and stuff get the stickers of both the sorting hat and of Fox the Phoenix right there we're going to be getting a Fox the Phoenix molded character within the series 2 collectible minifigures of Harry Potter soon and then right above we have the sword of Godric Gryffindor same piece being used within the 2018 Hogwarts Direct Consumer set. And then below on Dumbledore's desk, we just have the pensive right to the side of it and some ink and quill and a little light and all of that going on. And then finally for the last little area within this particular castle, this is probably one of the cooler play features at least, though I would have liked to see maybe the Patil twins within this particular set to go along with Harry and Ron. You get the dance floor right here, which this is actually really cool. We're gonna take two of our minifigures, we're gonna take Hermione and Crumb, since might as well, since I don't think Fleur and Cedric go together very well. You can put Hermione and Crumb within this particular area and then of course you can spin this around with your hands. It looks a lot nicer when you have a lot of minifigures on here but you can see that they go round and round right there. I really love this play feature. It's something very interesting that LEGO included and also using those new gear pieces from the LEGO Movie 2 right there. So yeah, that's pretty much all for this particular area. Behind them is just a little flame. And then we have the area that connects to the other sides of the Hogwarts castles. Looking at the next set, we have set number 75957, The Night Bus. This set includes minifigures of Harry Potter, Ernie Prang, and Stan Shunpike. This is the second time that we're getting Ernie Prang in Lego form, and then the third time that we're getting Stan Shunpike. This Harry Potter minifigure also comes within a couple of the other sets from this particular wave. Removing them from the equation right here, let's take a look at the build for the Night Bus. Overall, this is definitely one of the better builds for the Night Bus that we've gotten. You guys can look forward to my collection video featuring this one, as well as all of the other Night Buses from throughout the years. One of the cooler things that you can do with this particular set is that you can open this side area using those hinge pieces on the very side. To get into this particular set, there are some very nice details. Right away when you open it up, we have this little bed area, which I don't really like the build for this. To be honest, this isn't a really good build for a bed. Definitely the ones within the other sets are a little bit nicer, though they still are a little bit blocky. But I mean, there's a look at that. You can put your minifigure of Harry Potter in there, and that's a nice, easy open and close for that. That's the only real build that I don't care about when it comes to this particular set. And then, of course, that can slide back and forth right there as you're moving the bus, which is another really cool feature. I'm just going to take that out since we also have some other things to show. Right here, you can see that we have the second level, which actually doesn't really complete to the other side, which is another thing that this, that's a little bit disappointing, but I do like that they do feature the dangling chandelier up here. That's another really cool reference. And then we also have a little reference to the Daily Prophet right up at the top, another sticker, which is pretty nice. Over here, we have a seat, and then over at the very front of the bus, you have a place for your minifigure of Ernie Prang to actually sit to conduct the night bus, which I think it's really cool that this can come out to the very side. You can see how that works. You can put your minifigure of Ernie Prang into the night bus, just sit him down into this seat, and then you can curve the seat to the side right in front of the steering wheel. I really love that they do that. You have the steering wheel on the very front, and then you have a little lever to the side of him. Closing this up, so then we can take a look at the outer details a little bit more. On the very back, we have some more stickers, just a lot of very nice decorations on the set. All destinations, nothing underwater. Really love that they put that there. You have the sides right here with the wheels, and then the lights, and then the very front also features a sticker that says Night Bus, and then we have some stickers for the very front with a license plate and some other, other details going on on the very front. Also right here on the very side, you can see that we have the drunken head right there. I really love that they referenced that and that's another new printed piece within this particular set, which is another bonus. You can take a look from this side. We have another 
sticker right there on that 2x3 tile piece, all destinations, nothing underwater. And then you also have that little pole area for you to have your minifigure of Stan Shunpike getting ready to greet those who are coming onto the night bus. I love that they put that there and like you can enter the night bus from there. That's just amazing and definitely very well done by LEGO keeping all of this source material ac accurate. Moving to the very top of the bus, we have the very top layer. I love how this is slanted like that. That's very well done. And the windows are also very nicely done. You can move this top part off of the bus. And then you can see that there are some studs on the very top. So then you can clip that right on top nice and easily. Taking a look at the very top of the bus right here, you can see that we have the same sort of window design going on. We have a lot of more like curves going on over here, which is also very interesting. You can remove the very top piece right here, which you can move like that. And that's not really clipped in very well, but it's good enough, you know, it's just slid in that particular area. And then over here, we have Harry's trunk, which inside we have bar of chocolate as well as a little letter, very nice. And then on top of it also we have this little lantern, which I think is very interesting that they include that. That's all atop some jumper plates, two by two in red. And then on another jumper plate right there, we have another printed piece of the Daily Prophet, the boy who lived. Very interesting to have included that as the printed piece, I guess, since if Stan reads that, he'll definitely know that this isn't Neville Longbottom, but it's Harry Potter. So putting the night bus right back where it is, you can just put this right atop the set and then you have the night bus completely done with all of your minifigures in it. I didn't put Harry inside the, inside the bed, but you can slide that right in. It's a nice and easy slide in from the very side of the set since it opens up so easily. For our next set, we have set number 75958, Bobaton's Carriage Arrival at Hogwarts. Within this set, we get Fleur Delacour, Gabrielle Delacour, Madame Maxime, and Hagrid. One thing to note about our Hagrid minifigure, it's very nice to see him within his Yule Ball outfit, just like all of the other characters within the Hogwarts Clock Tower set, so then you can have this version of Hagrid dancing with Madame Maxime within that set. Also, one thing to note is that this is the first time that we're ever getting this particular vehicle within LEGO form, which is very nice, and it's pretty cool to see that they decided to make it within this particular wave of Harry Potter sets. So taking a look right here at the very front, we have the stage horse area with your flying Pegasuses, which I really love that they include these. Would have liked to see some more since there are normally like six of them at the very front of this particular vehicle, but it's fine that they included just two of them. Of course, you can just buy some other ones on the aftermarket or something if you so desire to complete the rest of the fleet. I also like how LEGO shows them having one with the wings down and one with the wings up right there. This is all connected via clip pieces, so then if you do so desire, you can also take this off from the very front. You can also take out your Pegasus characters as well. We do get additional two one by two plate pieces right here in white in addition within this particular set if you do want to remove the area which connects them to this particular area. The wings for these characters, if I didn't mention it before, are the same ones used on your Buckbeak the Hippogriff character, just inside this plain white color. You can move those up and down. Those are on those are on those clip pieces. Taking a look at the carriage itself, it has a very nice color scheme using this lighter blue color as well as some of this dark tan and some gold which looks very nice. On the very top we also get a little bit of that dark red going on. You can see we get a lot of different sticker decals on this particular set. You can see them on these shield pieces from Nexo Knights inside that lighter blue color as well as these slope pieces right here and then we also get one on the door with the Bobaton logo. The wheels I think are very nice. I like how they do give a little bit of a curve to this one so then you can move it back and forth alongside with the actual stage horses right here that you can attach right there with the clip pieces. Get a place if you want to put Madame Maxime right there in the front but she'd probably be riding within the carriage with the students. We get these lantern pieces yet again, but new within this golden color. I really love that we get those. You can also see, I love how they have this all curved and everything, and also like these side areas over here. Very well done by LEGO using a lot of different clip pieces to make things happen and work like that. Here's a look at the other side using the same stickers from the side that I showed before. You can see that. And then on the very back right here, you can see we get more of those lanterns, very nice. And then we also get this little treasure chest, which inside here, we get three of these little teacups, very nice that we get that. We also get 
this little bottle as well in addition within this particular set that's all atop this little jumper plate right there in the middle. Taking a look at the interior for this particular set, this is probably one of the cooler things that this particular set can do. So moving to this particular side, lift this particular area up, but first before you lift anything up, you do want to take off the very top, which you can take a look at that. Very nicely done by Lego right there, and then you can move this up like such, and then that gives you a very nice interior to this particular set. You have the front doors to the carriage, and then you have the other door, which is blocked by the interior details. You can see inside we have a little place for your tea and everything. You can set your minifigures of Fleur and her sister within the carriage right here. You can even have Hagrid and Madame Maxime right here on the very top. I think that it's a very interesting decision of by Lego to have it be like this. And considering that this is the first time that we're ever getting this particular vehicle within Lego form. I think it's very cool just to see it. We have this little storage area with some drawers. There isn't anything within these, which is a little disappointing, but it's just fine for extra detail. And you know, like I said, the color scheme to this set is pretty much the best part of it. And also the minifigures are very nice, considering that they are exclusive using some new pieces and everything. And then of course, this is the first time that we're getting this within Lego form, like I said. So it's pretty cool just to see that Lego made it at all. Taking a look at our next set, we have set number 75964, Harry Potter 2019 Advent Calendar. This set includes minifigures of Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, Hermione Granger, Albus Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, Professor Flitwick, and the Hogwarts Architect. Overall, there is a lot to cover over here since we do get a lot of smaller builds, but I'm going to try and get through them rather quickly. So here are all of the mini builds that are included within the set. I'm not going to be saying which day what comes in, but I'm pretty much just going to do an overall scan at everything that we get within this particular set. Starting all the way over here, we get this very nice little fireplace right here. Very nice to get that reef piece inside that green color. Not too common. I like the color scheme of this also using those one by one brick pieces right there with a the little curve right there within it that's very nice to get and I also really like how that is built using those one by one tile pieces right there just as some extra supports right next to it we get one of these smaller little Christmas trees we also get another additional one of those we get this snowman build right here that's pretty cool also using that scarf piece inside orange which is pretty which is also a pretty nice color to get that in we also get a plain white head on there, which is pretty cool, and a black wizard's hat. For the mini build of the Hogwarts Express, I think that's very nice to see, considering that we do have the Microscale Hogwarts Castle, as well as the Microscale Diagon Alley set. That pretty much fits in very well with the other Microscale builds. I also love the pieces used on there. That's very nice to get a lot of those curved slope pieces on the very top of it. We get four of these presents right right here one for Gryffindor one for Slytherin one for Hufflepuff and one for Ravenclaw the one for Ravenclaw and Gryffindor both include this 1x2 printed tile piece for a letter that's new for Harry Potter as of 2019 we have some food over here a lot of different food pieces within the set which is another bonus since you can add these to your Hogwarts Great Hall set we get two of these silver plates right here one of them with some popcorn pieces yellowish orange color we also get a croissant and two of these printed one by one cookie pieces we get this turkey piece right here in the back using those chicken legs which is also pretty nice or that's a chicken piece you can either you can call it either one we get two of these goblets inside this gold color and then we also get this pie piece which is very nice to get Moving over here to the side, we get this little chess game, which is also really cool as a reference to the first film of Harry Potter, since they do play chess a lot within the Christmas time period. Really love that we get that. That's a very nice reference within this particular set. For the last day, we get a couple of different accessories right here. We get an extra brown wand pack right here, two brown wands. We get that same book piece that we've been seeing for a while right there with the Wingardium Leviosa spell. We can see we get one of these printed tile pieces in, in tan, this 2x3 tile piece. This is really cool. This is the Hogwarts letter from Professor McGonagall. I really love that we get this as a printed piece. I think that this is probably one of the best pieces within this particular set. Behind it, we get this little treasure chest right here. There isn't anything in it. It's inside this nougat color right here. We have a chocolate bar on the very top, and then you also get Hedwig within this particular set. Moving back over here, we get another one of those smaller Christmas trees. We also get the Hogwarts Architect right here, which is actually separated between two days, which is very interesting to note. 
Right, the first day you get this little podium that he stands on right here, which also includes these very nice printed pieces, which also only comes within the Harry Potter Build Your Own Adventure book that I'll be looking at in a little bit. Get Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Slytherin, and Ravenclaw right here. These 2x2 two two printed tiles. Very nice to get those. And also we do get one of these 1x3 jumper plates right here with the two studs on there. That's pretty cool to get. You get your Hogwarts Architect statue character right here. Really love this gold color to the character. And also getting that Dumbledore beard inside that gold color is pretty nice. He gets some very nice accessories as well. Don't really know what they're supposed to be, but they're, I guess, Architect tools right there. Very cool to see this character for the very first time in LEGO form. Technically, it's just a statue, but, but just maybe we might get a actual Hogwarts Architect minifigure sometime in the future. In the very back right here, we get some very nice cables right here, just adding on to the Great Hall sort of decorations that you have going on. You get a candle on that one. We have these very nice banners right here. They're all the same build, just with the different colors representing the houses. I really love that LEGO included these. You get one for Slytherin, one for Ravenclaw, and then you also get two right here, one for Hufflepuff and one for Gryffindor. Right there in the middle, we get another Christmas tree build. This one's actually a medium-sized Christmas tree. Really love the way that they built this. So that means over the course of 2019, you get four Christmas trees out of the Harry Potter theme, which is a very nice bonus. And then finally, we get one other little build for a table right there with two more of those golden goblets on it. Overall, there is a lot to talk about when it comes to this particular advent calendar. If you want a more in-depth look at these, you guys can check out my actual review for it. But I'm really happy that this set was a success considering that we are going to be getting another advent calendar this year in 2020. And then finally, our last retail set and probably one of the more interesting sets within this particular wave, we have set number 75965, The Rise of Voldemort. This set includes minifigures of Harry Potter, Peter Pettigrew, Lord Voldemort, and a unnamed Death Eater. In addition, you also do get this statue right here of Tom Riddle Sr., as well as a baby Voldemort character. Removing our minifigures right here, we do not get Cedric Diggory within the set, but you do get him within his fourth task outfit within the Collectible Minifigures Series 1. So he's a very nice addition to this set if you own him, and then we also do get this Brick Built Triwizard Tournament Cup right here. Very interesting to see that they put a Brick Built one since we did get a printed one with that collectible minifigure series that, with that collectible minifigure that I just mentioned. But you know, it's still fine. I think that the Brick Built version is actually a little bit more accurate having this trans blue in the middle with it just to show that it is a port key. So moving on, so just like I mentioned within my actual review for this particular set, I wish that they made this a bigger play set. They could have they could have done a lot more when it came to this particular scene. There are a lot of different references within the set, which is another thing that I do really like. If you take a look at the different gravestones that we have over here, we have a reference to the Deathly Hollows, which I think is very interesting that they reference that here. Of all places, I think that that's probably the most interesting place to have a reference to that. And it's also considering that they are going to be making more sets. Hopefully we do get another graveyard, like maybe the one within Godric's Hollow. That would be pretty cool to get. We have another little graveyard gravestone going on over here, and then another one over here on this side. A lot of different vines and stuff, a lot of darker colors being used since this is a darker scene. In the very back, we have the cauldron right here, which that's just atop one of those 2x2 two two plate pieces in brown. And inside the cauldron, we have a lot of different things going on in here. I'm just going to add them one by one since I'm just going to take them out and do that. So since we're in this graveyard here and we're right in front of Voldemort's father's tomb, we might as well get a bone from him. We have flesh from a servant, willingly given. We have this serving hand piece in black to represent Wormtail's hand that he gives, which he actually has a lighter gray hand that Voldemort gives him within this particular set. Very interesting. We have blood of the enemy forcibly taken. We have this little red piece right here, this trance red piece to represent Harry's blood, since you can also put him up there on there, which I'll show in a minute. And then finally you have baby Voldemort himself, which is using that baby mold right here from one of the collectible minifigures, which I think it's really hilarious that they made this at all. This is probably one of the more funny things that LEGO decided to include in here, though it is a scary sort of thing for them to have included. You can toss that into the cauldron, and then you can bring Lord Voldemort to life. Yes, you saw that, right? I just brought Voldemort to life. So right here, this is a really cool play feature. You can just hide Voldemort in this particular area. And then all you got to do is lift that up like such. And then you have your minifigure of Lord Voldemort 
alive again and walking the face of the world. Of course, back here we have the grave of Tom Riddle Sr. Very interesting to have included that. This is the second time that we're actually getting this scene, which is also very interesting. We have a sticker on this 2x3 tile piece right there that says Tom Riddle. We also have this little guardian sort of angel or death going on right there, which I think is very interesting. You can put your minifigure of Harry Potter right there. You might as well remove his wand while you're doing this just so then you have him trapped by the statue. I think it's very interesting that you can do that. You can have him trapped by the statue. Statue just stays like that. It's also using that new dress piece inside that plain dark gray color which is also pretty cool. You can take a look at the very back right here. You just get some greenery going on. You can adjust the wings as such since those are connected via a under the neck accessory. Another thing that you can do within this particular set, which is probably my favorite part, is that you can give Harry Potter back his wand, and you can have Harry and Voldemort fight each other. That is probably one of the cooler things that you can set up right here. You can have them fighting each other. Though you only get one Death Eater just to watch within this particular set, we will be getting more within the future of this theme. Taking a look at the LEGO Harry Potter Build Your Own Adventure book, I'm going to be using some footage from my actual review for this particular set since I'm too lazy to rebuild the other set, sorry. But within the set we get one minifigure of Harry Potter, which is the same one used within a lot of the other 2018 LEGO Harry Potter sets. In addition, within this particular set we get the sorting hat right here, which is right next to your minifigure of Harry Potter. This is the second time that we're actually getting this new molded piece. We actually got this previously within the Hogwarts Great Hall in 2018. We also get the same sort of book right here with the same prints for the Wingardium Leviosa spell. We get a little treasure chest right here, which also features all four of these printed pieces right here, which I'll show right here. Now we also got inside this year's advent calendar, the Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, and Ravenclaw two by two printed tile pieces. Those are very nice to get within this particular set. Like I mentioned earlier, this set is a two in one build. You get two different models for this particular set. One of them being this little flu powder area, which I think is very nice. You can see those printed tiles being used yet again over here. You can just spin your minifigure of Harry around and then that shows that the flu powder worked. And then that brings you to the other side where your minifigure is at a new location. That's very interesting to show. We also use those candle pieces we use the same amount of pieces for this build that we use for the other build. For the other build, it's pretty simple. It's sort of like a recreation of the first ever LEGO Harry Potter set, which is very cool. Just showing the sorting, which is also why we have the sorting hat within this particular set. You can have your minifigure of Harry wear the sorting hat. That's another really cool thing that you can do with this particular set. In addition, you also do get this very cool ideas book right here, referencing both the first and second Harry Potter films, as well as some parts from the books, which is very cool. You can see some of your minifigures from 2018 interacting with each other within this particular set. There are a lot of different things to cover, but if you want to see an overall glance at everything that is in this particular book, you guys can check out my actual review for this particular set. Overall, throughout 2019, we get a total of 8 regular LEGO retail sets and 1 book. We also do get 2 mini builds that are in-store builds that I didn't really show within this video. I did somewhat show the Night Bus, which I rebuilt for an upcoming future video, but I never actually went to go get those. We get a total of 41 minifigures throughout all of 2019 LEGO Harry Potter. 34 of those are unique to the sets that they come in, and 7 of them are duplicates. To purchase the entire July wave of LEGO Harry Potter 2019 products, it would cost you about $240 in the US. To buy the entire August wave of LEGO Harry Potter sets, it would cost you about $70 within the US. The September wave would cost you about $40 in the US. And then finally, to get everything without the Harry Potter Build Your Own Adventure book, it would cost you about $350 in the US to get all of the new LEGO Harry Potter 2019 products. Compared to 2018, there wasn't as much to offer within 2019, but I expect 2020 will give us a lot, a lot, a lot more Harry Potter stuff and a lot more expensive Harry Potter sets in general. We are going to be getting two sets at $100 a $400 direct-to-consumer, a collectible minifigure series which with the price increase of $4.99 is going to be a little bit more expensive. And then in addition we do have a lot of other sets that are releasing and then another book 
with an exclusive minifigure that I probably will end up getting. Like in my last video, I'm only going to be rating the regular retail sets, so starting with the one that I think is probably the best out of here, I'd have to say is Hagrid's Hut Buckbeak's Rescue. Right there, that has a wonderful minifigure selection, as well as the first time that we actually saw both sides of Hagrid's Hut. We also get Buckbeak the Hippogriff, which is something that a lot of people are really sought after. And you also do get Cornelius Fudge for the very first time, and all of the year three versions of those minifigures of Harry, Ron, and Hermione really fit that set, and I think it's really nice to actually get them. Next, I'd have to say the Expecto Patronum set. Same thing really goes for that. The minifigure selection is very well done. I really love getting Sirius Black, which that's the first time that I ever got his minifigure. He's probably one of the minifigures that I really have most wanted within the Harry Potter theme, so I'm really happy that we actually got him. We get some Dementors for army building. The builds in the set, they're okay, they're decent. And of course you do get Harry Stag Patronus, which also opens up for more Patronus characters. Next, I'd have to go with the Rise of Voldemort set. That is a really interesting set for LEGO to have made. I really love the play features in that. You get some really amazing minifigures. Peter Pettigrew is really cool to get, though I don't really care for his hairpiece. You get Lord Voldemort. You get Harry inside his fourth task outfit, which works very well with the, with the Cedric Diggory from the collectible minifigures in 2018. And then, of course, you get the unnamed Death Eater, which also opens up for more of those being included within future sets. Next would probably go to the Hogwarts Clock Tower. You could also get a very nice minifigure selection right there, some minifigures from the Yule Ball, which has really never been represented in LEGO form before. You did previously get a Yule Ball version of Harry Potter within one of the DK books in 2011, but that doesn't really count. The main thing that that set really has for it is that it can connect to the other two parts of Hogwarts, the Hogwarts Great Hall and the Hogwarts Swamping Willow. That's really what makes that set stand out to me. Next would probably be the Night Bus. That set is a really nice remake of the other versions of the Night Bus. We did get two previous actual minifigure scale size versions of that set and I think that this is probably the best version. Though the bed build within that set I'm not really a fan of, the minifigures are really nice updates and all so it's just a very nice representation of the vehicle. Next would probably go to the Harry Potter 2019 Advent Calendar. We did get a lot of very nice exclusive minifigures in that set. We get some representation of all of the Hogwarts houses with those banners and everything. I think that's very nice. We get the Hogwarts Architect. There are just a lot of very nice mini builds within that within that set and extra parts that you can add to your collection that definitely fit in within any Harry Potter fans collection. I'm really happy that they made that this year and that does open up two more future Harry Potter advent calendars. The next set would probably be the Bobaton's carriage arrival at Hogwarts. That gives us a very nice and new version of Fleur Delacour, probably the best version of our minifigure throughout all of the 2019 Harry Potter sets. You get Madame Maxime and you get Rubius Hagrid inside his Yule Ball outfit, which works very well with the rest of the characters that you get in the Clock Tower. You also do get a little bit of a tease with Gabrielle Delacour having that other-sided facial expression. I really like that that probably teases us to another set based off the Goblet of Fire with the second task of the Triwizard Tournament. I think that that set is a very nice set to actually get since it has never been represented in LEGO form before. And I think that it's nice that they picked that over the Durmstrang ship, which we actually previously seen. So then now we actually could have both of those if you do own that set from the past. But I expect that they will probably end up making that sometime. And then finally, I'd have to say the Hungarian Horntail Triwizard Challenge is the last set on this list. That set does have some very nice minifigures from the first task of the Tri Triwizard Tournament. I do love the Harry Potter minifigure, though it's probably the weakest set out of all of the other sets within this particular wave. I feel like the dragon build could be better. The tent build, it's okay, but it's still a little bit weak. So yeah, that's pretty much all for my thoughts for all of the 2019 LEGO Harry Potter sets. I hope you liked this video as much as you liked my 2018 video. This one should be a little bit shorter than that one since there isn't as much to show. You guys can expect my 2020 collection video sometime next year in 2021 and of course I will probably try and continue doing these as I move on with within the future with the 2010 and 2011 sets or maybe even some of the other years of Harry Potter as I start to collect some of the older sets so yeah that's pretty much all that I gotta say for this particular video remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so every time I upload a new video so yeah that's it for now and I will see you next time Bye!